In the previous video, I showed you how to build your very first model serializer with the Django REST framework. And now we are gonna build a view to display that serialized data from the server. So in other words, just to give you kind of an example, if I was to query the website openapi.xyz, which is a website that I put up with the REST API, suppose I wanted to get this serialized data for this blog post. So we have a blog, there's the slug for the blog, it has a title, a thumbnail, some content. So I can use Postman to query that. I can press send, and then it gives me the serialized data for that particular blog post. So that's what we're gonna do here. We're gonna build the view so that we can actually make a query to the REST API and get that serialized data. So the first thing I wanna do is actually fix a mistake that I made. This should not be snippet serializer, it should be blog post serializer. It was snippet serializer because in the Django REST framework documentation, the example says snippet serializer and I just kinda of copied that. So we need to change that. So now we're gonna go down to writing regular Django views using our serializer inside of the Django documentation. This is essentially what we wanna do here. It gives you two examples. One is using a function-based view, and then or there, there's the function-based view. And then I think below there's a class-based view. Oh, it looks like there's not. I thought there was a class-based view, but it looks like it's just a uh, function-based view. That's okay though, because we are gonna be focusing on function-based views in this course anyway. So I'm gonna right click on API, which is the directory where all of my kind of REST API files are gonna be. I'm creating a new file. This is gonna be called views.py. And I'm also gonna need urls.py, so I'm gonna create that too. So urls.py. So let's go into views, and I'm gonna add a bunch of imports. So from REST framework, we wanna import status from, I can actually copy that line. I wanna go from REST framework dot response, import response. And we might not be using all of these imports in this video, but eventually we're gonna we're gonna need them for our views. It keeps changing that to a lowercase. There we go. Uh, now copy that again from REST framework. I'm gonna get decorators, decorators, import API view, and uh, now we need our models and things. So from account.models, we don't need this model actually yet, but I'm gonna import it anyway. Import our account model from blog.models import blog post. We do need the blog post model, that's for sure, because we're, we're serializing that blog post data. And the last import is gonna be from the serializer. So from, from blog.api.serializers, this is gonna be the serializer that we just built, serializers, import blog post serializer which is this uh, serializer right here. So just make sure that it's spelled exactly the same because we're gonna be using that. So this you don't really need yet. We're gonna be uh, using some of that later, or we're gonna be using that later, but um, might as well get it now because actually in the next video when we build the rest of the views, you are going to need that. So the first thing is let's define the name for this view. It's gonna be define API detail blog view, and it can take the request and the slug. So this is gonna be very similar to the actual blog post detail view. So there's the detail blog view. It takes the request and the slug, and then it just renders uh, an HTML page and then returns that blog post that was returned. So we wanna do something sort of similar, but we wanna make use of the serializer. So um, first I wanna actually annotate this with something, annotate it with at API view, and I can specify what type of requests are allowed with this view. So this view is only gonna be allowed to use a get request because we're retrieving data from the internet or from the website. We don't need to do a post, we don't need to do a delete, we don't need any of these. We only need a get request. So that's why I'm specifying an at API, at API view get request. Got a little tongue tied there. Now I'm gonna create a try accept block, try accept, and I want to do blog post dot does not exist. And if it doesn't exist, I wanna return a response object, which is something from the REST framework. That's this import right here. Generally, um, you wanna use this response object whenever you're returning responses from the REST framework. And I can specify a parameter of status and do status dot HTTP 404 not found. So that's from this status class here from the REST framework. And you can return any HTTP error. So if you wanted to you know, go to Wikipedia and just do you know Wikipedia HTTP response codes. You could look up all the different response codes, or you could also find them in the REST framework. So if I clicked on search here, I could do you know status, and I'm pretty sure it will come up with. Um, it's searching. It takes a second here. Not sure why it's not 
coming up http 404 maybe if i search that i don't know sometimes this search takes a little while it's um usually it doesn't take this long i'll just test to see if serializer comes up there's something wrong with the search right now so i don't know it could be my internet connection too so but anyway if you wanted to look up those codes that's where you would do it so what goes inside of our try here this is going to be the actual blog post so i want to do blog post dot objects dot get no surprises here this is how we did it in the other view so nothing nothing new here it's just looking for the blog post if it can't find it it's going to return an http 404 error so um, a not found error so now if request dot method equals get this is kind of unnecessary because we're already checking for a get request up here so this view will not work unless it's a get request but uh, you can add an extra check in here but i think it's sort of pointless serializer now we do serializer equals blog post serializer and we want to pass that blog post as input and then return response and get that serialized data so serializer dot data so we're making use of our blog post serializer we're passing in a blog post object that we got from the database and then we're returning the the serialized data from that serializer so now that that's done we can take this and go into urls.py our api urls.py so this one right here and we can import that and use it so from uh, blog.api.serializers or no not serializers dot views import our api detail blog view but we need a couple other things up here we need django.urls import path this is going to be again very similar to the other urls file like the regular one the only difference is these are going to be working with api views so let's come into here and create the url patterns we still need to declare an app name this is part of the blog app and now i'm going to do url patterns equals and we can specify the urls so path this is going to be the slug it just needs a slug to find the blog post it's exactly the same actually as the the regular blog detail view i'm going to give it a name name equals to detail so this is actually literally identical to what you have in the regular blog detail so everything's the same except for the view itself is just different uh, so that's it so now the last kind of step here is we need to go into our our full length or our like our project level urls dot pi file and we need to reference the api url the new api url and what i like to do is i like to create an, a little section here so i need to, i like to do like rest framework urls or some kind of a heading here and then here is where i put all the urls that are related to the django rest framework so like for the first one for example is going to be api slash blog and then i just need to do include blog dot whoops i need a string there blog.api.urls and i can give it a namespace of give it a namespace of blog underscore api or something you can do blog underscore api blog dash api uh, whatever whatever you prefer oh and i need a trailing slash right here so now all of the urls for the any any kind of app that you have in an api like say for example we wanted to create um, a rest api for the account stuff then i would do account.urls.api and change this to account underscore api and then it keeps everything organized like i know that all the urls related to my rest framework are going to be over here and then all the other ones will be kind of somewhere else so there's our blog urls i'm saving that and we should be able to test this now so i'm actually going to test this using postman so i'm going to go to our development server uh, make sure that everything's running looks like it's running i can refresh this and make sure i don't get any kind of crashes um, well let's check it in here first so blog api and i need the slug for this post so i'm just copying that uh, i'm going to go to api slash blog and then enter the slug and press enter so it looks like we got a problem it's saying 404 not found so this is kind of an interesting problem this is very this is kind of funny so when you when you visit a url using a browser it automatically appends a slash to it but if we look here we didn't add a slash here so that's actually the problem if i was to add a slash here press Control s to save it go back and refresh then we actually do see that blog so if you just kind of remember if you uh, if you want to view the REST API in a browser, which you don't always have to because you could still use Postman and you, you don't have to append that slash. But to cover kind of both grounds, you'll, you'll want to append that slash right there. 
So here is the information. You can see that it's displayed. The Django REST framework constructs this view for us, um, but we can use Postman just the same. So there's the title, the body, the image, and uh, you have the date outdated. But like I said, we can use Postman exactly the same as what we just, just did. So I'm gonna take that URL, we're gonna go into Postman, I'm gonna click a new one. Make sure you have get request selected here. And if I click send, there is the body or the entire uh, post. So we have the, um, the title, the body, the image, and then the date updated. So there's just kind of the raw JSON data. And that's what we're gonna be retrieving using the mobile application that we build in the next course that I'm making after we finish with the Django REST framework. So now that we've built our first request and we built our first view and we're able to actually look at data using Postman and also using a browser, now I'm gonna build the rest of the views. So we need a view to you know, be able to update the blog post, delete the blog posts, uh, view a list of blog posts, all kinds of different stuff. And uh, we'll take a look at that in the next one.